गाइस आई एम जेक वेलकम टू द पैशनेट पीपल यू गाइस नो लाइफ कैन बी सो डिमांडिंग इट बिकम्स अ चैलेंज टू कीप द पैशन बर्निंग सो द बेस्ट वे टू डू दैट इज टू सराउंड योर सेल्फ विद पैशनेट पीपल पीपल जस्ट लाइक यू एंड मी हु कैन इंस्पायर अस इन अ डे टू डे लाइफ सो लेट्स स्टार्ट दिस शो विद आवर फर्स्ट गेस्ट डैन कोजीना बट बिफोर दैट लेट मी शो यू अ स्मॉल इंट्रोडक्शन वीडियो हाउ आई मेट हिम I was going through a blog for a long time. Having a YouTube channel made me happy, but the content could not get me to grind. That's it. I said to myself, got my coffee, I picked my car keys, I started driving to wherever, parked my car and took a stroll. Walked through this alley full of colors, dark and bright, just like many shades of life. Caffeine and colors worked like wonders. I was inspired. Felt like finding this guy. Went on Facebook and sent a message. For four days, there was no reply. Finally, I got a reply from Dan. You know, when I looked at his art for the first time on those walls, I imagined him as someone who has a lot of experience and wisdom, someone who might be in his forties. Uh, but to my surprise he's a very young boy in his early 20s but let me tell you no short of wisdom in fact i was so impressed and inspired by him i learned a lot from him his voice has authority and empathy at the same time and his words are full of wisdom now i am on this personal journey to seek answers to learn and evolve and ignite my passion <laughs> so i started asking some questions to him let's have a look so dan you know the whole quest to find you and get to know you started with a question in my mind i saw the mural and i thought like what goes in your mind as an artist when you see a blank wall and what is that first step of creation of this beautiful piece of art the things that go through my head when i look at an empty space first thing that i think about is the potential colors and subject matter i can put into the work how can i make it fun and enjoyable for the community and for everyone that looks at it how can i put my own flair my own style in there and then the first thing i have to do is start brainstorming ideas picking different themes and uh, elements i'm going to incorporate and is it like all work or you kind of have fun around it well i have a lot of fun there is a lot of work there's a lot of labor in in the painting but in the brainstorming stage it's really fun uh i can try a lot of different elements and and show my client uh or the viewer what i have in in mind and we can go back and forth it's a really fun part of the project and i love i love it this is an elaborate piece of art so how long does it take for you to complete it Well, normally a project like this, um a project to this scale, it takes days to do. You know, this one in particular took 2 weeks. So, the first week I drew everything on the wall, I did all the background, and then the second week I did all the little details, I did all the highlights and brought everything together. It takes a lot of time, uh just as the planning takes time. You know, the planning for the project took maybe 2-3 days, you know, in total. Um and then to come here you know every day maybe 10 hours a day you know it wow. can be a lot of work but it is it's quite enjoyable experience and it's worth it what dan said was very interesting to me he said that when he looks at a blank wall he wants to make it fun and enjoyable for anyone who looks at his art he even adds a lot of joy to brainstorming ideas and he takes his time to finish a masterpiece he's not in a hurry there's no rush this is a big lesson for me because i'm always in a rush to just make a video and post it at the end of it it's just a random video and if it doesn't satisfy my creative self that's where i was getting the creative block 
and his words actually remove that creative block or artist block from my mind. So the keywords are, first thing first, have fun, enjoy your work and others should also have fun and enjoy when they look at your work. Now the next thing that I asked him was about fears. You know, when you're working, a lot goes wrong. So how do you respond? Let's have a look. Dan, another thing I want to know is that, you know, being creative and uh, artistic is one thing, but uh, when you are on a project like that, do you have any kind of fears of it going wrong or, you know, things happening? Well, anytime I approach a project, I always know there's going to be challenges, you know, ahead, and I'm going to face some sort of problem along the way. So I never get too worked up when that moment happens. If I make a mistake or I'm, I spill something or a mess or something breaks or I have artist block, you know, those moments do, do always happen. And it's kind of just about working through those moments, persevering, not letting them bring you down. And as long as I have a good attitude in those moments, everything works out. The key word mentioned here by Dan is perseverance. Persistence to do something despite of difficulties or delay in achieving success. I realized that, you know, uh, creating a mess, mistakes, things going wrong, it happens to everyone. It's just not me. What a relief it was. Being impatient is the biggest issue when I'm working. If something goes wrong or not according to my plan, I'm unable to improvise. I start throwing tantrums and I just spoil the whole day. But now, if a situation like that arrives, I have a constant reminder. Hold this reaction. I mean, why are we even doing this? What did you learn from Dan Cozina? So that was my wife, Demi, and she never let me forget this particular lesson because my reaction impacts her the most. So as I mentioned that Dan is a very young boy in his early 20s, so definitely I was curious to find out uh, when it started his art and creativity. Let's get back to the conversation with Dan. So Dan, you know, uh, I feel that this level of creativity, it comes after years and years of practice and passion and hard work. So I'm so curious to find out that, you know, how and when like you started, I mean, is it in your family or is it just you? I do have a, I have a very creative family, um, not necessarily with the arts though. Um, my mother is, uh, loves music and she used to play different musical instruments. Uh, my father was an engineer type, um, he worked for the city. Growing up, my family was very supportive of, of my art or, or creativity. Um, they liked it when I would play music or draw or paint and they were supportive of those things and I owe it a lot to, to their support. Um, you don't necessarily have to have um, art in your family. Uh, I know my parents were very supportive of art, but you can do it on your own. You can find the creativity within yourself and you can, uh, you can flourish as an artist. Um, I always used to love drawing. I loved cartoons and comic books and any creative project I had in school, I loved it. I always excelled, whether it was uh, like painting or even you know drama or acting and all that. I love music as well and then even tattooing and tattoos and uh, eventually I, I started tattooing. Um, As a professional? Yeah, I started professionally tattooing. Um, before then though, I did go to college, I did go to art school. Um, but after that, I got a job at a tattoo studio and from there I was doing lots of tattoos on my friends, some family. So it all kind of stems from the things that I enjoyed in life and kind of bringing them all together and painting murals kind of all happened when I started getting more serious about my art and serious about what I wanted to show and how I wanted to express my work and to the size I wanted to do it as well. Um, so it is a definite journey. It takes a lot of time to um, practice all those different skills, but um, it's an enjoyable one and I've had so much fun along the way. Dan owes a lot to his family, his parents for his art. And he specifically said that you don't have to be born in a in an artistic family. All you need is the love and support of your family in doing what you love. Now this is a big message for me, for my kids in future and all the parents who are watching this. Just support your children. Let them have their own choice. Just support them by all means. 
you will witness something magical developing and growing in front of your own eyes. We all have seen how passionate is Dan about his artwork, his creativity. I was curious to find out what is his take on life in general. As an artist, what is your philosophy? I've seen you love colors, but in life, what is it? Is, is it all colorful or are there shades of gray as well? Well, I think there's a balance. I think there's both dark and there's both light. I try to aim towards the positive, the light, and add lots of color and creativity to all the work that I do. Because I feel like there's a lot of negativity out there and I do feel like adding color, um, it brings a lot of positivity to your attitude and to the community's attitude. So I definitely try to improve the way you feel when you look at something I've done. I want you to be happy. I don't want you to take everything so seriously. I want you to get lost in the colors and the complexity of it at the same time. I want positivity to be an overall message in my work and I want to stick to that. What a beautiful thought he shared with us. He wants you to improve the way you feel when you look at his artwork. Positivity is an overall message in his art. I learned that whatever work you do, it will turn out beautiful if it starts with positive thoughts and feelings. You know, there was uh, so much uh, positive aura around him when we were talking in that alleyway. And I'm sure in the video while watching, you must have also felt it. Now I'm going to play a part of the video where I had a little fun conversation with Dan to find out, you know, his lighter side. I'm just going to ask you a few fun things and be as prompt as you can be. I'll just give you a word and I want to know what you feel. Okay. Okay. So, dream. Um, big. Canada. Um, heritage. Future. The future is hopeful. Beauty. Is in decay. Lottery. I always lose. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so Dan, uh, when I look at you, man, I feel that, you know, at such a young age, you have already created so much art. So what's your, what's your plan now for future? What kind of big canvas are you looking at? Well, um, I think in the future, I'd like to travel a lot more. I'd like to venture off beyond Niagara Falls and beyond uh, Beamsville and see if I can paint in other parts of the world. Um, I think it would be a good experience. A lot of artists that I look up to do a lot of traveling. Um, even if I was just to travel uh, around the region a little bit more, I would like that. Um, and I don't want to stop tattooing, so if I can continue to tattoo and continue to paint um, in the future, I think I'll be very happy. So Dan, uh, what is your favorite thing about your career as a mural designer, as a tattoo artist? Well, one of my favorite things is yeah. getting to be creative every day um, and working directly with the community and with people. Mm -hmm. um, I think working with people is, is amazing, especially when you're an artist. Yeah. Sometimes as an artist, you're alone a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So doing murals and tattoos, I can connect with the community, I can share ideas, I can be inspired or inspire others, and I think that's my favorite part. Dan, I want to ask you one thing. I mean, your art is beautiful, creative, everything. But about you, I want to ask you, who do you credit for your good looks? Your mom or dad? I have to give credit to both of them. I can't oh. just pick one. <laughs> All right, so it's a mix. Yes, it's a mix. Okay, it's a fantastic mix, I must say. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so Dan, I really appreciate you meeting me and giving me a vision into your mind, into your art. That was really wonderful and I learned from you that enjoy the moments don't let them pass by because of one stupid mistake that's right so that's amazing my pleasure it was nice to meet you as well and thank you so much i wish you of all course. the best for all your future work i'm gonna keep a track on your new work as well thank you and let's try and meet again of course we'll meet again soon thank okay. you if you do what you love that helps your attitude in life that's a powerful statement made by Dan and I totally agree with it. Right attitude might be the most important ingredient in bringing fun, joy and happiness in your life and work. Even with the rapid fire that I played with him, his replies reflected depth of wisdom and good terms with his passion. And thanks to his parents, Dan is an excellent combination of looks, personality, art, inspiration, perseverance. So guys, thanks for staying with me till the end of this video. I have shared with all of you what Dan shared with me, what I learned from him. I hope it's going to help you also in your life and work. You know what I believe in? When your thoughts are blocked, think opposite.
Look at the other side and you will find a lot of passionate people everywhere. You will be surprised how the next door person walking in the alley, sipping in the cafe. People like you, people like me can teach us a lot. So if you want to be inspired, just go and find out those passionate people. I'll find them for you as well in this video series, so don't worry. And if you are passionate about something, don't hesitate. Just send me an email on my email ID, thinkoppositestudio at gmail.com. Let's get together and share the passion with everyone. See you next time soon. Keep that passion burning. You will be surprised how the next door person walking in the alley, 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 alleyway. Alley, right? Alley. Mm, Alley hmm. in the alleyway. Thanks to his parents, parents, parents. Parent. Thanks to his parents, Dan is an accident. Accident. <laughs> Thanks Normal. to his.